On the south coast of England is a beautiful island that gets more sunshine than anywhere else in the UK. It even has more sunshine than some areas of Spain. It's a tourist hotspot and regularly has more people visiting than actually living there. There are plenty of historical sites that's worth a visit. The weather was kind to us, the people were lovely and the food was delicious. Top dollar, isn't it? So there are loads of good places coming up in this series, so sit back and relax and tag along with us. But the story begins with us waiting for the ferry from Portsmouth to Fishbourne. We're killing time until our ferry is ready to leave and take us to the Isle of Wight. And you know me, I can't resist a burger van. Don't let your burger get cold. We're parked up at a place, I think it's called Eastney Lake, on a tiny little spit that leads out to the ferry that links here to Hailing Island. Looks like they've turned up just in time for the boat. Weather can't make up its mind today. One minute it's sunny, next minute it's looking quite menacing. Anyway, we're held up here waiting for the ferry. Ours is crossing from Portsmouth to Fishbourne at 2 p.m. On the horizon there is a section of the old Mulberry Harbour that should have been used during the Normandy invasion on D-Day. Something must have gone wrong with it for it still to be there. It's a peaceful little place to wait in amongst the houseboats, but some of them have seen better days. We haven't been away for five months. I know you've all seen videos every week, as usual. But they're all from the archive that we had stacked up. And we've both been at home for the last five months, having all sorts of work done. And now that's all over, and we're ready for a new adventure. And this time, we're taking you to the Isle of Wight. Okay, Charlie Brown, ready for the ferry? Yeah, I'll see Time to get going. That tide is really pouring in now. It's only a few miles from where we held up to the port. This is the White Link Gun Wharf Terminal in Portsmouth. Cars are small vans left. We're about two minutes before we're supposed to turn up. So let's see if they let us on an earlier ferry. Hiya. Hiya. Bear with us having a buffering moment. Yep. Come on. Uh, Durden? That's it. Or Duerden? Duerden, yeah, yeah, that's it. Lovely. Pop yourself into lane number five. If there's any space on the 120, we'll do our best for you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so number five. five. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Cheers, you. matey. That would be good if we can get on an earlier one. Yeah. With the space. So how much was this crossing? So we're doing the um, Portsmouth to Fishbourne and it was £94. That's just one way? One way. But there was no advantage to buying a return. It was the same price each way. Our luck was in. They did let us on the earlier ferry. Deck 
Fine, okay. I was very impressed with the ferry. Very spacious and comfortable. And got a cafeteria. What more could you want? For safety reasons, you must stay in the lounges or on the outside decks. Smoking, including e-cigarettes, is not allowed even on the outside decks. Please supervise your children while you're on board. And for security reasons, please keep your personal belongings with you at all times. Emergencies happen very rarely, but you need to know our safety procedures. If there is an emergency, you will hear several more short blasts, followed by one long blast on the ship's whistle and or alarm bells. Here, all the alarms going off on the deck. There were huge signs asking people to disable their alarms. 8,000 years ago, this used to be a river valley and you'd have been able to walk across to the Isle of Wight. But ever since the Ice Age retreated, the Solent has flooded with water. And now the crossing is about three miles. And very soon we'll be pulling into Fishbourne. take the ferry, fly into one of two airports. Perhaps the most exciting way to come is via the hovercraft, which travels between Ride and South Sea. It's a unique craft with a skirt of air that allows it to skim over both the water and the land. This form of transport was created by Sir Christopher Cockerell in the 1950s. It's the only passenger hovercraft currently operating in the UK and crossing takes less than 10 minutes. This is a dinky one in a camouflage paint. It's not long before the pilot returns and prepares the craft for the next crossing. Between 1981 and 2005, a company called Hoverspeed operated giant hovercraft between Folkestone and France. This form of travel is very safe in comparison to others, but in 1972 there was a fatal accident when one of these overturned in gale force winds. We took a walk around Ride Town Centre in the hope of getting a cafe for a cup of tea and a piece of cake, but most of the places were already closing. The Royal Victoria Arcade was one of the first purpose-built shopping centres on the Isle of Wight. It was built in 1835 by William Houghton Banks, an apothecary in the town.
We've parked up on the beach now for a bit of a rest and the sea is beautifully calm. Directly opposite us is the Spinnaker Tower in Portsmouth. That is one of the Solent Forts and I think it's called No Man's Land. When it's time for me to get a mobility scooter, I want to do what they're doing and live near the sea. That looks yummy. Mm, what sort of pastry is that? Uh, puff pastry, um, what do you call it? Mm. No. Those geese are noisy, aren't they? It's a pretty noisy spot. Yeah. And traffic's loud here as well. Yeah. It'll do us for a while. We sat here for quite a while, taking advantage of the free parking until we felt like something to eat. Right, Charlie Brown, let's go and get fish and chips at Chipmunk's Fish and Chip Shop. They get good reviews. And we finally got the rain they promised. All running over there, been caught in the rain. Yeah. Quick, in you get. Put your microphone on. Looks like the fish and chips are on the way. You got your dinner? Yummy, let's get back and scoff them. So I think the seagull knows we got fish and chips already. These look good. What a beautiful rainbow. How'd you rate those fish and chips then, Bunny? Average, I think. Yeah, I'd have to say the same. Not as good as we were expecting from the reviews they had. Chips were nice, but the fish was a bit soggy. Yeah, yeah. It was the inside wasn't too bad. The batter was a bit soggy, mm. and there was a lot of oil came off it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see if we can find better ones somewhere else. <laughs> I'm sure you will. The fellow in this camper van has somebody talking to him almost all the time we've been there. I'm just going to try and find a park up now. Yeah. I've got somewhere in mind that's been recommended. So we're going to sit out. So this is our park up for tonight. Spinnaker's all nicely lit up. Shame I can't get into focus though. And the forts are brightly lit as well. Quite a lot of people here. Right, we're all nicely snuggled in on our park up with all the others. It's been a good first day so far. Let's see what tomorrow brings. I think we should have an early night, Charlie Brown. Oh, okay. And get the bed down, maybe watch some YouTube. Should we get ready for bed? Yeah. Join us next time when we begin to explore the Isle of Wight properly and move around the coast in a clockwise direction. We also start visiting some of the places you recommended to us. Rain stops play. The sails of the windmill turn this massive wheel, which in turn turns this cog here, which turns the central shaft, and connected down below is the grinding stone. If you feel like supporting the channel, then there's a link to buy me a coffee in the description below. We do try and make it worth your while to do that, but we know everybody can't afford it, 
So if you can't, then a like and a sub will be just as good.